morning job sites, teachers and panelists. We are extremely pleased to have all of you here. Let's begin the session with a prayer. I request you to bow your heads in reverence. Almighty God, we thank you for this day you have given us. As we gather together, we praise you for this day and your purpose for it. We thank you for every seat that has been filled up today. Guide them and shower your blessings upon them. We pray that throughout this session, you, you give us a time of fellowship and friendship for now and the time ahead. We pray for the smooth functioning of our event and your mercy upon us. Throughout this day, give us a cheerful spirit, even when things don't go in our way. And in your name we pray. Amen. Hello everyone, I'm Swatka S from 2B Kong I'm Shubham Acharya from 2B Kong G and we will be your MCs for today. Firstly, I would like to welcome our panelists and students. I now request the panelists to light the lamp. Our 
Our next panelist, Mr. Nitish Kashyap, is a highly accomplished, successful, result-driven finance and management consultant with over 12 years of experience. A certified management accountant, CMA US, with a master's in commerce, he has catered to domestic and multinational clients across different sectors. He is currently founder CEO at Manatha Solutions Private Limited and co-founder at Kadubi Logistic Services Private Limited. His exceptional leadership, analytical thinking and financial facilities have led to financial and strategic growth for many organizations. Unlike a typical finance guy, his off the weekend track experience makes him indispensable. We now request sir to accept this token of the Our next panelist is Ms. Akshita A. Salicha. With over four years of experience as the team catalyst, she specializes in developing and defining standard operating procedures for seamless task execution, managing end-to-end back-end operations for deals, and overseeing social media accounts, including content creation and data-driven strategy development. Her commitment for, for leveraging technology, promoting professional development, and fostering transparent communication contributes to the overall success and, adaptive, and, and adaptability of her team. She has been associated with more than the textbook as a content manager, skill development trainer, and chief operating officer from the year 2019. We welcome you, ma'am. Please accept this token of gratitude. Our fourth panelist is Mr. Gautam Krishnam. He is the Assistant Vice President at Wealth at ba True Bacon. He has received the KPMG Rising Star Award for dem demonstrating exceptional performance and making a positive impact on the firm within one year of joining it. He was awarded the Investment Foundation Certificate by the CFA Institute. Throughout his college years, he has won numerous business competitions and has been named the best manager a number of times. Welcome, sir. We request you to accept the matter. With that, let's begin the panel discussion. I would now like to pass over the mic to Pakshar. Okay, uh, good morning and welcome everyone. To the panel discussion. I hope my voice is audible to the back. It is? Okay, perfect. So, how many of you have heard about finance which are? Can I have a raise of hands? So, you all have it just, just to personal finance, right? Perfect. Okay, so now the panelists and we have a discussion in the seat. And if you have any question, you can just raise your hands and we'll take the questions from your side as well. Uh, to start with, the first question which we will talk about is okay, for someone. Uh, as the discussion goes along, we would like to first ask the question in general, like for someone who is just entering, just entering the job market, say his entry level salary is 25 to 30,000 rupees, what's the way in which he can manage his money? Say he's living in his family probably for now, but a basic gist of how he can manage his money from the salary he's getting in the basic level. Uh, and his family. First question, everybody wants to know that, but we made an assumption there that you are living with your family. How many people here, raise your hands, are living with family? So, okay, so most of the St. Joseph's crowd at least seems to be coming from home. So, good for you when you get a job in value, you're not paying rent, unless of course you want to go work. But uh, before I answer that, let's just see like uh, the crux of you know money management and the first question seems to point in a direction that when you start earning, you need to start managing your money. But the problem with that is that you guys already are spending money. Why do you not bother managing it today? Like, it just, I mean, there's no rule that it has to be your money for you to manage it, right? Like, even parents have probably earned that with some hard work. So on that note, just the first question from my side, you guys can raise hands. If I was to ask any of you all today to give me a breakdown category-wise of your expenditure over the last quarter or the last month, let's say November just went by, Category-wise expenditure breakdown of your last month's expenses, 
how many people will be able to, I won't ask for the breakdown that will expose too many things. Like, but how many people will be able to give a breakdown? Say that, hey, I spent this much and these are the categories in which I spent it. Anybody who, who will be able to like pinpoint tell me that I spent this much in this? Not a single person? Okay, we have one raise, one hand. Okay, so we have like probably, I'm gonna say, sub 1% at this point, so like 2-3 hands out of I don't know how many people sitting here. So the logic there is that we already don't have inculcated into us this phenomenon of if I have something in my wallet or the bank account or nowadays on you know the bank account directly through UPI, I don't have a way to know what's going on in that front. But we somehow expect that, I think most of you all will graduate in a year or two, that from that first salary, you are now a new person altogether and now you will immediately start saving, investing, doing this and that. So, just to, you know, probably initial thoughts before I pass it on to the other panelists, is when it comes to how does one, during that first paycheck onwards, start saving, I think the first thing you do before you do anything is figure out where are you spending, like, and that will of course be a mix of food, rent, this and that, but unless you can say that, okay, so taking a 30,000 number that uh, the moderator just mentioned, if you're starting out at 30,000, what is the amount that you absolutely cannot spend less than? Because it's very easy to say you must do 50, 30, 20 requisites, needs, wants, this and that, but none of that works, right? Because by that logic, you should not spend more than 50% of what you absolutely have to pay on. And if your rent is going to be 16,000, I, like you technically don't have enough to save or invest, right? So probably just as an opening thought from my side would be to budget your expenses before you even think along the lines of savings and investments. Because savings and investments, it sounds fancy. People have made a lot of big followers by speaking about that. But the problem is early career, honest truth, you don't have enough money to spend and save and also invest. So. That will probably be my first answer. Um, so beautiful. So I would like to take an analogy of cricket. So whether you are batting first or whether you are chasing. See if you are batting first, you know the, the kind of conditions which are there on the pitch. Right? You know whether it's going to be a high scoring game or a low scoring game. So based on that you can actually, so if you think it's a slow pitch, you know it's going to be a low scoring game. So you know the kind of money, the, the kind of score you would want to amass on that kind of a bit. Similarly, here, talking about correlating it with personal finances, so when it is a slow pitch, or for example, when you know that you're passing out just out of, out of a peak up, so you know this is going to be the, the kind of earnings that you're going to have. So when, when this is going to happen, so you need to take care of things first. So in the, in, for, in the first month, can you go bang, bang, bang? Or in a couple of months, can you go all out? Can you go do a lot of capex expenditures? Can you go out and do a lot of stuff? So probably the answer, the answers are no. So you can technically it is all about planning, much 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 ahead in life. So technically looking at looking at yourself in the future, where do, where are you going to uh, where do you see yourself in, in a couple of years from now, right? And based on that, work backwards, work backwards into today. So what are the various actions and steps that you need to take from today? So that will actually help you plan the kind of activities that you need to do today. So it will help you set the right kind of foundations. So simple things, simple things, simple. Uh, so probably I will talk about the, the risk aspects, other panelists will probably talk about other aspects. So uh, one of the major things that all of you, especially young professionals, must take care of the risks in life. So there are various kinds of risks in life which is unavoidable for everybody. So talking about life for example, with respect to life, there is a risk which is the risk of dying too early and in order to avoid this kind of a risk, of course there are going to be dependents in terms of family, parents, etc, etc. So in order to avoid this kind of a risk, what do you do? The first thing first, take a term insurance, not an endowment insurance, but to be very specific, take a term insurance. Moving on, the risk of living too long. In order to cater to this kind of a risk, how do you come back? Start invest, investing in small SIPs. So of course all of this after the planning of expense management, planning of everything else, but I'm purely talking right now just about the risk parameters. Because these are things that you have to do. Setting the foundation is super important, so I'm right now only talking about the foundation. Risk of dying too early for that term insurance, risk of living too long, so for that you are going to invest in SIPs or probably small investments which will technically accumulate and accumulate and compound over a period of time. And the risk of health, take a health insurance and again, I can't emphasize the importance of this, 
take a health insurance not for 2 lakh, 3 lakh kind of cover and especially if you have your first job, the company will give you health insurance and most of you will be happy with it. But what if your company fires you tomorrow? You are left with, without any, any insurance. So don't take a 2 to 3 lakh kind of cover, take a 20 lakh, 50 lakh cover. Because you are not covering for medical costs today but you are covering for inflated medical expenses, over productive. So in fact, I took a medical uh, health insurance cover way back after in my 20s and I still remember the premium that I pay for a 50 lakh cover is, is just a couple of thousands, even now. Right? Because I took it early, I had, I had that kind of advantage. If you want to take it in your 30s and 40s, for the same summer shot, the premium will be much, 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 much higher. So, that's purely from a risk perspective. Ensure what are the risks that are applicable to you. Cover yourself from risk because when you are in your first job, you don't want to be bombarded. All of a sudden, let's say three months into your job, you don't want to be bombarded with a huge liability. Now, you don't know where to run. You, 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 may, you may not be give, getting personal loans. Or probably you might fall into a debt trap, a vicious debt trap which is going to bombard you, which is going to put a lot of un unwanted pressure, which will probably uh, stop your growth, whether it could be career, it will stop your flexibility, all of this could stop, right? So, none of you should fall into any of those vicious traps for that. Ensure what are the risks, cover the risks first. So, other aspects of income, growth, expenses, savings, I'm sure other panelists will share their thoughts. Yeah. Just before I uh, ask the other panelists, there is one thing which I saw mentioned about SIT. Is there anyone here, can like, you have a raise of hands for internships? Anyone earning through internship? Okay, there are a few people who are earning a little bit amount through internship. Have you ever tried SIP like a basic investment? No one yet? Or no? So, so just one thing if you can just see about SIP, like how much would be the investment upon you at this point? Probably they are earning with 5,000 or 10,000 rupees for their internship. So SIP is the basic, you can start up even with 500 rupees. So I mean trust, you know, 100 rupees? Fantastic. So, I think 100 rupees is something which everyone can start investing. You would buy one funny product or something down and 100 rupees will be covered for you. So if you can start with something like that, maybe that compounds over a long period of time. And one more question, like, can we increase the SIP? See, I'm starting with 100 rupees. Next month I can request and start with 500 rupees. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. So I think this is something which you can take away that. You can start a little bit of SIP investment. Thank you. Am I audible? I think both of them started well with respect to personal finance. And uh, how many of you are at your home uh, heard parents discussing about finance matters? Very few. So usually the finance related aspects in Indian homes is not into everybody. Earlier in Ribal, uh, uh, the bigger joint families that used to be managed by the senior most people at the uh, helm of the affairs and uh, as the nuclear family started it has come down into the parents only two people managing things and usually kids won't know what's happening around and that's also one reason we are sitting and discussing this topic here and in our academics also from the school days till college days we try to understand finances of the companies, we have capital budgeting, right? we have working capital management, all those concepts, but not any concept related to our own finance. The end result for anybody from any stream, not only BCom or engineering or medical, whoever it is, who studies, end result is earning. Right? You agree? So once, why you are? Why anybody wants? For fun. For fun. So for fun means you have to spend. Right? So when you spend, then anything that remains you may get into savings and investments. If not, then you may have to borrow. These are the five aspects of personal finance. Earn, spend, save, invest, borrow. So usually, what we get from our parents and elder people is the simple equation income minus expenditure equal to savings. And for expenditure as uh, uh, he was talking about uh, having a budget and all that. But what, what I feel is just to change because you guys are all information at your fingertip generation, right? So you, you need to change that equation. 
it should be income minus savings equal to expenditure. So you need to bring that savings in and and try to use that savings into investments with a due concern about your own life. As uh, Nitish was talking about risk management. So I call that what he said is I agree 100% and I call that as two major risks we need to look into in our lives. As I said, one is DTS, dying too soon. So that can happen even when you are studying or whenever it is. But still, DTS is one you need to manage. You can't mitigate it, you can reduce the effect of that. And other one is like we all have a working life till age 60. Right? So you are earning. So during your work life, how many of you go uh, want to go on a holiday or something? Do you have gone on a holiday? Anybody? With your parents and all? You have gone out? Nobody? No holidays? So you have seen your parents spending in holiday, whether they are spending more on holiday or when they are working. So what are you going to think about your retirement going to be? So once you reach 60, you are earning and you are set for some kind of a lifestyle. You start with 30,000 and you may end up with 3 lakhs, 30 lakhs. Right? You will have a lifestyle set. But after your earning days, you will be into your retirement. And if you have not planned your retirement from your first job, then it will be a big challenge. So that's what he was talking about living too long. The risk of living too long. So the two risks need to be covered. And the investment parts comes in. So that's what I suggest with your 25, 30, whatever is the salary. First cover your risk and get into that Starting from 100 rupees also, they do the investments. Start. So, as much as gyan that all of us want to give, I think uh, the first time you're going to earn, please go spend it all. Simple. Like, uh, we've been waiting, like, what, 20 years of our life to have that money in our hands, right? As much as your parents give you, it is still their money. You don't call it your money. But that first paycheck that you get, when you have it, I think you have to go explore and spend it all. Now what happens as you keep spending, right? Like your first paycheck you would have had on your friends, you went for a party and all of that. Second paycheck also you did that. After a while you go, why I'm doing all this? And when that thought comes in, that's when anything that today we are going to speak will come into picture. And uh, to start off with, I don't think you have to have like a big uh, plan in mind and all of that because I believe until you get married, your parents are going to take care of your any emergency funds, uh, let's say you meet with an accident, all of that because they won't abandon you, right? Like just because you started on a go on your own. So rent, all of that, I'm sure that then all is taken care of. All you have to do is put all that money on you. So just keep like what you say, maybe even 500,000 like they were saying into SIP that goes automatically every month. I don't think that harms any of your party, just don't go for one hookup alert that day and you'll be sorted. Second, I would say is um, take at least a portion of that in, and invest on developing your own self. Because uh, the whole game in your entire career is on you, right? You got to bet on you, yourself. So if you can just work on developing one skill that can probably make you earn that extra 2,500 which you can put next time into SIP and still keep your entire salary to yourself, I think that's what's going to count the most. So uh, don't worry about any emergency fund savings, nothing. Like my biggest savings formula is DAD. That's all. My dad. He's going to take care of it all. 
all i have to do is work on myself and uh, become better I, as long as i can do that i am good so akshita actually has a brilliant point it might sound uh, funny uh, so in fact uh, i was about to ask this question to all of you what is the best investment you can ever do on yourself so that's what akshita said so the, that's really the best investment the kind of chgr and we can talk of any kind of equity cryptocurrency forget any get rich any quick quick schemes so but investing in yourself will give you the best kind of return it will beat the chgr the return which any anything else can give right uh, so simple your you invest on a on a 50k 50k towards learning a skill you might probably end up with a job of job or a freelance assignment of 10 lakh 20 lakh so look at the kind of returns that you are getting within a span of what 6 months one year that you invest so because you are not only investing your uh, money right you are investing time energy money your efforts and you are becoming a better person you are sculpting yourself to become a better person a better person of yourself and that is definitely going to give you dividends in many many much much more, many ways that, that are not even expected so i'll talk about my journey also quickly back to you uh, i actually wanted to say one thing probably most of you have seen the reels where they say you know you should go to a luxury place and spend money just to get the feel So next time when you are thinking about earning for yourself, you will probably think in a bigger way. Is that is that does that hold true? Uh, and it just just the it does definitely. Like if I want to travel the world, then I know I have to at least earn two like what? I have to have ten lakhs to at least go for one world tour, right? In let's say minimalistic expenses, going in hostels and all of that. So now I know that I have to slow my hands today to make sure that I'm going to earn that money. So your dreams get bigger. So to add to this, I am also an alumni of Joseph's College, is it PUC, not SSCC? So I'm a Joseph too. So during my few days, I know I was 17, uh, 16, 17, whatever. I didn't have my DL, but uh, I used to whatever fake my DL, whatever we did. Let's not get into that. So I would go to Oxford and Shoreham, the one year MCC College. We would take a test drive of those cars. In and around MC College. So later on, I didn't buy a Volkswagen, but I'm fortunate to be blessed with other cars. Bought a Sonata, which was my dream car later on, and then moved on to other cars. But yeah, the point being, I experienced it. So if you experience it, I don't know if these guys believe there's a manifestation, which is true. It, it happens. I kind of do believe in manifesting, but sometimes it might lead to wrong way as well, right? Like just I made the expense today, I get habitual of that tomorrow. But see, I just lost the track of my business. I am not able to earn as much as I was expecting to earn and I, now I am probably going into depression sort of things. So do you think in that way it might have a negative impact on people who are trying to spend their love? And since you mentioned the start like um, you are earning 30,000 in the first month, go and enjoy with the entire 30,000. Do you really think is it completely positive or it might have a negative impact as well? It's like, uh, see we learn only when we fall. So it's better to fall early and learn rather than uh, do it later in your career. So I just, I just have one contention to that whole thing, right? Like, of course, you guys would have noticed too. Like on stage here, we have uh, five different individuals. When it came to money, everybody has a very different perspective. We've already seen that. The thing is, the whole point of a panel discussion or any of these people who been there, kind coming and telling you things. Is that you don't like? Why are you even doing this? If my advice was go make your mistake and figure it out, I should just stay in the office today, right? Like, so the logic is that okay, just to give you like a short story about this. Like, I've decided by the way that I will not stay for more than 90 seconds at once in this panel discussion. So please cut me off. But I think I have 45 left. So what I'm going to say is that my entire today I work for a wealth management firm where we basically manage around 1,500 crores of assets. The smallest client that I personally manage would be around 10 crores. The biggest would be around 300. Now, at that point, if I have to have any sort of insight into wealth management, it is one thing to learn it; the other thing is to experience it. There's no way I'm losing 300 crores if I have that. I would manage somebody else's 300 crores. But the idea is, the first time I got into investing was in college from my second year when I was trading on zero that doing intraday in the last bench, and the amount of money I lost. It was so staggering that back then I thought I'll never be able to recover it in a hundred years. But of course, right? We then realized that you can earn enough. The point is, if I was to come here to tell you guys, "Ki, you know what? Make your mistakes. Why do we fall? Only to rise. Batman rise and stuff like that." Then there's no point of this. The logic why we hear is, hear it like you will make all the right decisions. Now, despite knowing what's right, you will end up making mistakes, and that will eventually make you better. 
I think that's my 90 seconds. Um, yes. Oh, so the logic is, if you're smart, you learn from your mistakes. If you're smarter, you learn from others' mistakes. So essentially, today we are target uh, targets here for you, so that you can technically learn from our mistakes. I mean, let us share all our mistakes here. If you're smart, you learn from your mistakes, and if you're smarter, you learn from others' mistakes. So that was a very interesting thing. I would like, uh, since you mentioned about stock market, even in my, when I was last year in college, I used to trade during the class hours, even in between. So is there anyone who is doing stock market trading here? I think there are a few, few students who are into stock market. Do, do anyone do? <laughs> do anyone know about stock market? I can have a raise of hands to the people who know about stock market, what a stock market is. Okay, I think most of the people know about stock market. And since we are coming to the topic of personal finance, do you think stock market plays a very key role in it? Like investing just a minimal amount? Or who was the key role in it? See, again, salary is at a basic level. They all started working somewhere. Yes, they have to invest a certain amount into stock market. What would the state be there? Like according to you, what should they start with investing there? Yeah, so I, I think after I lost a lot of money, the first thing my dad told me is good. Like now you understood that if you go by this trajectory, like this is not going to work out well. So I, I kind of got onto a deal with him that whatever I am able to save from what I am supposed to spend in the college, even if that's 2000 rupees, every month you will put exactly that much. So eventually the amount will become 4000 and in my name we will invest into mutual funds. So one of the first you know, equity research I did was finding the best sort of mutual funds, putting it there. And you won't realize it guys like, I mean I did this in second year of college, by the time I graduated was working again 30,000 type salary right at the beginning of your career. No, no big thing that I did on a daily basis, but when I opened my bank balance, it didn't look very pretty. When I opened the mutual fund app, it looked really nice. So you were rich in one side, poor on the other side. But it just felt like, that's when I realized that, okay, this 2000, I didn't even think of it as a big deal, but 2000 plus dad's contribution of matching that payment 4000 over a year is what, 12 and 4, 48,000 bucks in a year. And even if you are to, I mean, everybody says 10, 12, 15 percent, but whatever you grow by, I used to actually account it in my expense tracker as an expense that is no longer my money, but it adds up. And to answer the question about mutual funds, investments, and all that, how many people today know where the Nifty is at? So we have, like two people know where the Nifty is at today, but everybody would have heard commentary about oh the Nifty has gone up, Nifty has gone down. Have you ever bothered to know where is it going? Like. Like what is this up and down? So only if you do it for yourself, will you then feel the urge to one day learn more and more and that will eventually translate into personal finance. But I don't think, stock markets is like one element, right? You could invest into FD, it's an investment. Bad investment, I understand, but it still is an investment. I don't think stock market and personal finance, the correlation is 100%. It's an element that helps you generate wealth over time. So that's where, uh, when we talk about personal finance, Straight away we start talking about mutual fund, we start talking about stock markets and people get bamboozed or like. So in, in Indian uh, middle class families and even upper class families, equity markets or the investment in the stocks is kind of a, considered in a different way altogether. And the reason why our students are also not, not trading or having any exposure to it, maybe the education plays a role there. So we talk about uh, subjects which is related to a, a corporate or in general for any business entity, not about the individual's finances. So they are, they are not aware. How many of you are aware about Nifty? So not even 50 percent. So what you need to have uh, to invest in the stock market? What is the basic requirement? DMAT. DMAT account. Anybody heard of DMAT account? Then uh, most of them haven't heard about DMAT account or like we didn't see the raise of hands for DMAT account. DMAT. Yeah. DMAT account. Okay. Then you need a bank account and money in the bank. Right? <laughs> so you need a trading account also. 
So DMAT account is to store your shares you buy or maybe through a IPO route. So I was starting with the assets where all you can invest, different asset classes. So equity is one, one kind of an asset, debt is another type, you have commodities, you have forex, you have crypto, so real estate, right? Commodities, we have precious metals, gold and silver and other things. So, these, having an idea about these all different asset classes and the concept of diversification, so all, all that plays a role. So you need to get interested into these areas. Without getting that interest, and it is for your own sake, as I told that the capital budgeting and all you are learning for somebody else. But these personal finance concepts of different assets, asset allocation, diversification, these are all for yourself. So getting interest into these areas, knowing where to invest, what to invest, could be the first step I believe. Correct. Uh, so uh, I just want to, like, the, do anyone have a question? to us, like from personal finance, like something which you feel is very relevant and important you want to ask. Okay, so I will actually uh, take up one topic. Have you heard about the 50-30-20 rule? Uh, can I have a raise of hands for the 50-30-20 rule? How many people know about it? So yeah, the crowd is pretty much active. You all know about the 50-30-20 rule. I think 50% is, you, the money is for necessity, 30% is for entertainment, and 20% is for the saving and investment. Uh, what's your take on the 50, 30, 20 rule? Like, a lot of people talk about it. We have heard a lot about it in the social media. But do you really think so that in a personal level is it really important? I think uh, this is a generic group. And especially personal finance, you cannot have a set formula for everybody. This personal finance is like uh, you have a cloth and you go to a tailor and get your measurements and get it stitched. It's personal. It's, it's personal. So I feel based on 50, 30, 20 rule, you can uh, think of altering it as it suits your requirement and your availability of funds. Yeah. Uh, I think Dr. Vinod, this opening remarks, he mentioned a very important equation. He said, uh, the revenues minus income minus income minus expenses is saving. Instead of that, reverse it to income minus savings equal to expenses. So if you are going with this equation, 50, 30, 20 rule will become redundant, right? Because essentially, what are you doing? You, you may not be investing 20 percent. You might be setting up SIPs, like my friend Akshita said. You set up some sort of random SIPs and forget that it's your money. So by by the time your salary hits your account, a majority of the, the chunk of it goes off in, the, in terms of savings and investments. And again, this friend also mentioned that technically he used to forget. He used to call, consider it as expenses. Right? Savings, he would actually write it off as expenses. But technically that works because end of the day, what's money left? So with the money left, then you are actually planning for your necessities. So when you are actually doing it this way, you are working backwards. So you start living frugally. Because you are not left with a lot of money. You don't want to liquidate your savings. Because there, when you look at uh, your mutual funds, the dashboard of your mutual funds, uh, there is going to be a dopamine nerves, right? Because you look at huge money there. And all of a sudden, why do you want to liquidate that? And there the interest kicks in. Then you know that here something is working. When you, something is working, you wouldn't want to liquidate that, right? So there is a dopamine rush which is required. So you don't need to get a dopamine rush from a bar. You can also get a dopamine rush from your mutual funds dashboard. So that's the point. <laughs> oh. So I believe like how Gautam mentioned at the start that uh, first figure out how much expense are you particularly making and that's your lifestyle cost basically. So uh, personally for me, uh, I don't uh, believe in savings because uh, I I've put my money in stock market. So let's say I hit rock bottom also, I can always get that money back into my bank account in a day. So it won't matter that much. For me, the formula is more sort of, I put 40% into my investments, so that goes automatically, it's not my money, that's how I consider it. And let's say I lose it also. I think I'm young enough, uh, at least until I hit 30, 
I know that I can always double down and work on myself and get that money back. So consider it is gone itself. 40% into investments. The next 40% is on myself in terms of learning and becoming better. So that's like a personal self-growth investment. The rest 20% I keep for my expenses because I don't have that kind of lifestyle where I would spend more than that. So I think once you figure out what your uh, expenditure is and how much you need to have a good time, the rest of it you can start allocating into different places and see how you can leverage yourself better is what I would say. Um, okay, that was a great take again. And I just want to uh, ask one different question actually. Uh, see, the students are well settled now. They have done a good job. Uh, they have earned enough amount. There are two students, E and B. He has invested good in the starting. He has earned a good amount now. And B is also doing really well. He has a good salary, good liquid position as well. Now see, is it a good option for him to invest in gold? Or do you think it's an online, there's an online version of gold, right? Like you can ETFs. So do you think gold, uh, everyone knows about gold, right? Again, show of hands for the person who knows about gold. Yeah, I think everyone should raise hand for this one. Yeah. Okay, everyone knows about gold, sir. So, do you think at a larger scale is gold a really good investment? Because personal finance is not just a right now one moment thing. It will go on throughout their life. So, do you think that gold will be a good investment? Or is it like, I no case take, like I want you to take home. So, I think one of the first questions was why do you want, you want to spend, right? So, gold again is not just, uh, gold is not just an investment from a money perspective, gold has to be looked at from an emotional perspective, from the perspective of holistic development, right? So how many of you uh, like to purchase gold for yourselves? Boys, girls, raise hands. Let's see your show of hands. How many of your family members have purchased gold? How many of you would love to buy gold to your mom with your first salary or whatever? Everybody, right? So why is that? Do you think it's a good investment? Are you looking at return on investment there? You know that your mom is going to be happy, right, if you buy gold. So there are a lot of things in life that we have to do that where you have to factor not just the financial return on investment, but you have to look at the holistic return on investment. So talking of holistic return on investment, in fact companies are getting into that, right. Today we are not, we have, over, we have uh, kind of surpassed the, the, the state of financial statements. We are coming up with integrated reporting, with ESG, with uh, non-financial reporting, so essentially where we are capturing emotional aspects, we are capturing intellectual property, various other parameters. When companies are doing it, again as individuals we should do it, do it also. It is not just personal finances, it is personal holistic development. So we should factor multiple parameters into consideration. And uh, that has to be factored and you should give, you should assign weights for you, what are the what are the various things that are important for you in your life and then assign weights and then decide, right, whether it's a good investment or not. That's my take on that's the legal the board. Sir, do you have any question? So, whatever said and done, in my home, gold is invested into apartments only. Nothing else. As he was talking about, it is more an emotional thing rather than looking into return on investments. So if you are looking at return on investment, gold as an asset class, then don't invest into apartments. It doesn't pitch you anything. Better to get into ETF for <laughs> Yeah. So, I, I'm not sure if you've heard of this uh, man called Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah, so he says that uh, gold, of course, you need a lot of money when you're going to invest. Like just 10 grams is about 60k plus, right? Which you might not have the bandwidth uh, with the money that you're going to earn. But silver, on the other hand, is something that you can uh, get into. So he says, whatever extra money that you have, which you don't want to do anything with, rather than saving, you put it as your uh, silver, just go buy a silver bar. And uh, the rates and all keep changing. So I'm sure at any point of time, even if you liquidate, you will not lose much. But having something that is uh, sitting there in terms of gold or silver does matter to a greater extent. So that would be my so uh, I have a simple formula, Excel formula. So just look at whichever commodity you would want to choose, gold or silver. Look at the rates 15 years ago, as of today. What is today? What's the date? 5th December. So 5th December 2008. What was the rate of silver per gram versus today? 
So the formula is in Excel is RRI and present value, future value, 15 years. Right? Present value is the, 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 the value 15 years ago, future value is the value of today. So and then you get the return on investment. You technically understand what is the rate at which this particular commodity price is written, have risen, right? Whether it's 30%, 15%. Based on that you can decide whether it's gold has risen or uh, at a higher pace or silver or whichever commodity, right? Based on that you can make a call. If it is once again for investment purposes. Um, next one thing which I would like to ask about is something about real estate. Do you think, uh, as like uh, there is a lot of questions which are going around the social media about real estate. Buying real estate is not good. Just renting is a very good best option and investing the money which you uh, rather buy the home and just keeping it in the fixed deposit, probably that much see, uh, for example, if house is worth 2 crores, you keep that much money in fixed deposit, you will get an interest around 1 lakh 20,000, approximately in that you can take a house on rent. Is, is that a really good take or is that is that something very diff different? What's your uh, take on real estate market? Yeah, so the problem with that is... And this one more thing, what are the possible options, if not real estate, what are the other possible options to be looking? Yeah, so uh, the problem with what you just said is nobody looking to buy a 2 crore house ever has 2 crores. Like they are always looking to finance it with loans and all of that. So it seems to be a common thing that we keep seeing on Instagram that people say Instead of buying that house to two crores, if you have put it in the stock market, where is that money coming from? Like nobody is, you can't get a personal loan and go put it in the stock market, it's not a wise move. So technically speaking, I think you should look at real estate as a separate thing altogether. If you're going to stay in the house that you're going to live in and you're not expecting a rate of return on it and you're just looking at it as a reduction of expenditure, it may still make sense. And to answer your question about what are other real estate investment options, there are, there's something called REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. They are listed on the brokerages and you can buy them as you would buy a share of Infosys or TCS or ITC. So you basically go search for either the Embassy REIT or the Mindspace REIT, which is currently at around 360 rupees or so, the Embassy one at least. And what effectively happens is, let's say I have 4,000 rupees and I go buy 10, 15 units of this Embassy REIT you are getting 10-15 shares, let's say, of the embassy rate and on a per year basis you can expect around 5-6% to 6 of dividend income or, or in this world rental income on that. So on 4000 bucks you get 6% every year and you also make money if the value of the share goes from 316 to 326 to 416 to whatever. But the flip side is you could make that 6% but the 316 could go to 216 and you are sitting there with a depreciating asset. Uh, before like, we go to the concluding question, uh, there is one interesting take which I felt in the last year. I started reading books, which is that is outside of studying, like not the studying material I'm saying. I just started reading books in general. If you all could just name one book according to you, which is really good in terms of investment and in personal growth as well, whatever you think is one book which you can name it. Uh, before getting into the book, uh, I will say there is some kind of a gold rush happening there and uh, most of them are in a hurry to move on. And uh, with respect to real estate, uh, the question was uh, like uh, whether it is a good idea for getting into investing into a house where you stay or uh, put it into income earning assets. So any investment you try to do is like you all work, we all work for money. Making money work for us is one of the best option I IP. But Indian uh, sentiment says that roti kapda maka. So once you are okay with your roti and kapda, then the uh, quest for a maka starts happening and uh, you try to have your own home. That sentimental value comes in. And borrowing for that will actually make you uh, in a debt zone for your almost for a lifetime kind of a thing where you borrow for a home where you stay and you keep on, you are very much concerned with your EMIs. So, your 50-30 rule or income minus savings expenditure, all that doesn't work once you get into that kind of a debt trap. But that was, that was the situation earlier, say 20 years back, 20-30 years back. Today, people are thinking of being in a rented house is, is a better option. You, you get that freedom, you are not uh, bound by anything, so you can move on to a different city also, different location also, as the opportunity comes. 
So renting out uh, property would be a better option. But if you are investing in real estate, it should be generating you some return. A rental income for you, maybe commercial real estate can be a good option for investment. Uh, I think uh, the best book, at least until you reach 30, is uh, The Almanac of Naval Ravi Khan. Uh, if you want to become rich, if you want to make money, then that is something that you must look into. Uh, when it comes to exactly what you, sh what should be the amount that you should be putting and the safest option possible, I recommend this one podcast that I recently came across uh, by uh, Prakhar and Neera Jarora. So he says, I'm just putting 6,000 bucks into uh, like uh, every month into my investments. But I know that by the time in the next 10 to 20, 10 to 15 years, not even 20, I know that I'm going to be a crorepati. So if that's something that you're aiming at, then it's not really that complicated. Just go watch that and you'll be sorted. You want to take book, which? So, the name of my company is Manartha Solutions Private. Manartha means management and Artha Shastra. So, I think Artha Shastra is the book which I would recommend you. So, because Artha Shastra is not just about getting rich, it is about the holistic development, it is about material wealth, it is about prosperity, it is about happiness. So, please read. Yes, you are speaking. Uh, my take one book is uh, Ketan Parikh's Behavior in Finance. So, have a Look at it and there is also one more book, uh, I don't remember the author, but it uh, actually correlates the game of cricket with personal finance. So it talks about that uh, 400 plus chase of uh, South Africa against Australia, it starts with that. Yeah, so where Gibbs has scored a double hundred and one. So uh, it's, it's also a good book on personal finance. Yeah. You also just on the book? If there was something that really stood out that much when you would ask this question, it would have come to mind. But now I can think of 15 books, none of which have made a real impact, but all of them probably could have done a better job if it was a YouTube video. So I really don't have a suggestion that's going to be a supplement. And I am reading a book is a pain, 300, 400 pages, and if by the end of it you don't feel like you've really taken away something, I don't think it's worth it. But if you just want to know about personal finance, guys, like there's Google, there is YouTube, there is Ask your specific questions. There are mathematical Excel sheets that are provided in the description of many of these videos. You can put in your salary and all that. But I think the bigger question that the one thing that you guys should be thinking of is once you make the first paycheck, right? Like once you know that your CTC is a staggering 3.6 lakhs, which is going to translate to hopefully 30,000 a month and all of that, try to figure out how you can solve for that 30K. That's it. Like everything else is a step way far away. Like whether you should rent a house or buy a house, you think of it when you have the money for it. Like right now your only problem should be, if I have 30,000, what can I do with it so that I don't feel like I'm being irresponsible. And the most underrated way of making money for the future is not investments, it's only saving. It's very, very easy to say I earn 30, I will save 3,000 rupees, which is 10%, right? But if I give you 30,000 rupees today and ask you to make 10% return on it over a month or two months, it's close to impossible. So just think of it basically from the formula of God has given me this much in a month, what can I do to ensure that I retain most of it by the end of the month? If you do that, all the issues that like investments are, what is the privileged thing that you will do with what is remaining? That you, uh, you will all figure. And nowadays, you know, everybody from you know, grow to Zeroda to coin to Paytm money to, you know, Angel One to Sher Khan, they are all doing a very good job. Whether you like it or not, they make you invest. So it will end up becoming you press five buttons, investment will happen automatically. All you have to do is have the money for it, which is comes down to how much you save. So Gautam's statement is company which is you do your job of saving, investment right before it will happen because of time value of money, because of compounding, which is the magic, which is the God article which will happen. So let the investing happen by itself, you would take care of savings. I really like this interesting take where you said earning from 30,000, earning 3,000, that is 10% is difficult. But you have 30,000, just save that 3,000 and you are done a good job. Like you can, that's the first step for your personal finance, I think. I think I would just like to say one last question, we will conclude with us. One, just one line statement which says 
something which is very important in terms of what you feel in your personal experience is good from your experience at the start of your career, which will really impact their life. Just one statement, it can be related to personal finance or anything in general. One feedback which you want to give it to them, that would be the last company statement if you do. Yeah, so what we're looking for is a fancy quote basically. And uh, like the one thing that comes to mind is uh, if you budget, you're telling your money where to go. If you don't budget, you're wondering where your money went. So that's probably something that makes an impact. Yeah, be, be fearful when others are greedy and uh, be greedy when others are fearful. That's one of the Warren Buffett's famous quote on investing and when you are putting money. Yeah. So from my own learning, I can say don't do costly mistakes. So, because very early in my career, I have, uh, we, we were running a very, uh, an ad agency company when I was in my college and uh, we entered into contracts and burned our hands and it was legal battle for many years and we learned a lot from our mistakes. So, yes, do mistakes, but don't do costly mistakes, which takes you many, many years for you to recover and come back. So, play safe, uh, play with small money, don't fall into deep vicious debt traps and all that because it's a complicated world out there. So early stages of your life, experiment, but don't do costly mistakes. Stay safe, not just finances, with every other kind of influence also. You would want to try out new stuff out there, but be careful as to what you are trying. Uh, don't get into things that you cannot really get out of it, right? So if something is against your conscience, never do it. Please don't do it. Go to come back to hunt, hunt it. Uh, for me, uh, the biggest learning has been uh, don't try to be an expert in everything hire the expert to do their job. So if I, like, because I will have to put my mind, my energy and everything to understand stock market, know which uh, company to invest in, what if it falls and all of that happens, I might as well hire a portfolio manager. Like even if you're making money out of my money, it's okay at the end of the day, I know I will get my returns. So I'm, I'm peaceful, at least I can put my energy on myself, my career, I can learn how to speak better, coach better, so that's where I put my money on. So, just hire the right person of course, but let the expert do their job. You you know it, not like you don't know anything, but, um, but don't try to ace it on your own. Yeah. Okay, just one last thing. Do you have, does anyone have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Graduate, what are some like opportunities and challenges which I may face uh, in the outside uh, world, like the corporate world or anything if I join a job? So just to, here is the question, like after you graduate, what are the opportunities and challenges yeah. that you might face? Like when you say opportunities, what are you talking about? Challenges are enough. <laughs> yeah. like, um, there are many opportunities, like uh, you say that there are some strengths which we acquire and we join. So, now opportunities in the sense, what what area you want to explore into, what type of uh, factors or fields uh, you want you to explore. You see, opportunities like uh, investing, right? Or uh, investing or... Uh, suppose I get an opportunity, how do I... So, I, I think I understand your question. Let me take this. So, technically there are various things that you could do, okay? In simple words. You can technically join as a salaried employee with a specific time bound kind of activity. Second is where there is something called as RSI, which is Relative Sustainable Income. So what I mean by RSI, Relative Sustainable Income, is essentially where you are not uh, working in a, in a full time job with, by devoting your entire time, but essentially you are giving your time by an RV basis. You are acting as a freelancer, you are acting as a consultant, right? Where or probably uh, you are giving your time as on various activities, right? Uh, so where you are charging by the hour. So by doing this, by by doing this, you are actually valuing your time even more. That is the second kind of opportunities that they could do. The third kind of opportunities is, uh, see, the first two methods is where you are only giving your time. So the third thing is where beyond the time, you can look at other things. So Akshita said one thing, I will hire the experts to do their job. So that's the concept of leveraging. Uh, what, I, what do I mean by leverage? Right now, it's not just about my time. So you're going to the third level, which is leveraging others' time. So as in when you are actually sought after, your opportunities increase and increase over a period of time. You can start leveraging other people's time. You can start hiring people, hire, grow, uh, grow your outsourcing company or consulting company or whatever you want to grow. That technically will become a business. So that's leverage somebody's time. But so far, once again, we are only talking about time. But beyond time, there are of course asset classes. 
So at, uh, talking of asset classes, there we get into the world of manufacturing, into trading, into various other things, which you can of course leverage and explore. That's opportunities in like my friend Gautam said, challenges are abundant everywhere. So good luck explore. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions or so I would just like to see one really important thing. Uh, generally when we sit on the other side of the discussion, we have this thing that we are hearing everything and a lot of things just go out of your mind. But one or two things that you take in that has a lot of impact in the future. This might not be relevant exactly to you at the moment, but this will have a lot of impact to you when you actually start to working. And really take this point, I really felt very good about this particular point. Start saving a little bit. And you know there are a lot of apps which you can just download. You can keep a track of how much expenses you are making. This much I'm spending on the restaurant, very good, that's okay. This much, how much I can save? And we start saving little, little amount, all of a sudden in one month, after four or five months of passing, we'll see you have accumulated 40,000. Then that's when investment opportunities will come to you. You'll start seeing those invest investment opportunities. So I think that's one thing I would like to see and I'll just pass on to you. Thank you. That was truly informative, insensitive, and thought-provoking discussion right there. I hope you guys had a lot to take home from. Now, I would like to call upon stage Rani and Chirag to propose a vote on plans. Should I move it that way? A warm and graceful afternoon to one and all present here. I am Rene, the Assistant Coordinator of Commerce. I am Chirag, the Assistant Coordinator of Community. It's my privilege to propose a word of thanks speech and acknowledge the contribution made by our panelists, moderator and members of the audience. Listen with the will to learn. By Mr. Raman. I would like the opportunity to put all my gratitude into words on behalf of the BCOM department, Converse and Community Association to thank our moderator, Mr. Pakshal and our respected panelists, Mr. Vinod, Mr. Nitish, Ms. Akshita and Mr. Gautam for taking our precious time out of their busy schedule and consenting to grace this event. Thank you all for making this event enlightening and inspiring for our audience. We request you to accept the plaque as a token of appreciation. Right in front now. Turn it off.